Deepti Galeron joins me on the set to take a look at the papers today. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Jeannie. The opinion papers are certainly fired up about the U.S. election, aren't they? Well, these elections are always seen as a referendum on the sitting president, even more so now this year on Donald Trump's mandate and, of course, his polarizing politics. Uh, according to the Independent, early indications show that the turnout will be high and that there's a good possibility of more diverse candidates getting in getting in or winning their elections, enough support perhaps for the Democrats to curb Donald Trump's influence. The editors at The Independent, though, say it's unlikely to translate into the wipeout that previous presidents have faced for a few reasons. The Democrats really lack an iconic leader to lead the party against the Republicans. And right now, they also lack a story that can, quote, win back the blue-collar vote that they lost in 2016. Secondly, it's going to be hard to fight off the genuine enthusiasm that there is currently for uh, what many see as the president's uh, advances on the economy. Now, there's also a lot of talk about what these elections will actually mean for American democracy as a whole. Well, this is uh, the, the topic of this article from Vox, the website that says this election will actually provide checks to Donald Trump's presidency, much needed checks that uh, party members haven't uh, really done so far. They haven't held Donald Trump to uh, account the checks traditionally opposed by the media have been weakened by Trump's smear campaign against journalists. So in many ways, this midterm election is also a referendum on the state of American democracy. That's also epitomized by this cartoon from uh, the Washington Post's Tom Tolles. This is not a gun store, but a democracy store. And here the votes are just as powerful as a semi-automatic. Now, of course, that attitude is very different when you take a look at the conservative press. Well, it's quite interesting. The National Review has published a piece, a uh, conservative journal uh, published a piece urging voters to separate Donald Trump from the Republican Party. The individual, I quote, whose name is on the ballot is up for re-election, not the president. And voters should not switch to the Democrats by default because, I quote, to sweep out a good man or woman and replace him or her with somebody who doesn't share your values is a sign of political decay. Meanwhile, as those millions of Americans are heading to the polls today, halfway around the world in Madagascar, that country is also preparing to elect its new president. And the uh, pan-African uh, website, African News, has put together 10 uh, facts about uh, the election or what you need to know. 35 candidates trying to unseat the sitting president, among them three ex-presidents, three former prime ministers, a music musician and uh, a few pastors. It's the second election since the 2009 coup. And here, this year, key issues are lack of access to water, electricity, jobs, in particular in the drought-ridden south part of Madagascar. Now to Pakistan, where hardline Islamists have signed a deal with the government pre preventing Asya Bibi from leaving the country. Well, Asya Bibi is, of course, a Christian woman sitting on death row for eight years who was acquitted uh, last week uh, of blasphemy charges, a decision that led in turn to widespread protesting by Islamic hardliners. The hardline TLP party has signed a deal, according to L'Humanité, the French paper, with Imran Khan's government preventing her from leaving the country until an appeal is concluded, a capitulation from the government. That's how the French paper puts it. And uh, what's interesting is France has really positioned itself as willing to welcome Asia Bibi and her family into France. The French website loves saying, save Asia Bibi, her family and law and her lawyer from a probable death if they stay in Pakistan. Next now, Pamela Anderson has spoken out about what she thinks of the Me Too movement. Well, this is the woman who's been propositioned by Vladimir Putin. She's gone from playboy bunny to animal rights activist and, of late, ardent supporter of Julian Assange, the exiled WikiLeaks founder. She's never been afraid of going against the grain, you could say. And in her latest interview with Australian TV, she slams the Me Too movement, calling it, quote, a bore that paralyzes men and lacks common sense. Feminism, she says, has gone too far, although she does consider herself a feminist. She also talks about her personal life in this interview, saying she She's been engaged more than nine times. And while she loves the weddings, she finds the marriage part a little bit difficult. All right. Well, let's just <laughs> wrap up now in Italy, where the hardline interior minister, Matteo Salvini, has been giving marching orders by his girlfriend. Yeah, let's call it like it is, Jeannie. Matteo Salvini's been dumped on social media uh, via Instagram, in fact, by his TV star girlfriend, Elisa Isoadi. She actually posted this intimate picture of the two of them in bed saying, I quote, it's not what we gave each other that I will miss, but what we could still have given each other. <laughs> Uh, the couple's relationship has been well documented and passionately followed on social media. In fact, a poll shows that uh, 
Um, many Italians consider Salvini to be the real leader of the country, uh, hence the reason why there's so much interest in his personal life. Although it must be said, some are pretty outraged by that photo we just saw on Instagram, what Vanity Fair calls a post-coital selfie. Anyway, you might say that Isoradi has given Salvini his expulsion papers. Ah, and getting <laughs> dumped uh, on Instagram. Ouch. It's always hard. <laughs> All right, Deepti, thanks for that. Deepti Laurent there with that look at what the papers have been saying today. You can get a closer look at that, of course, on our website, the address france24.com.